we have all these new technologies these days that are affecting everything. And so let's look at these different technologies when it comes to today's teens. And today's teens love to game. By the way, um, I'm speaking in a very general kind of way. I'm going to be talking about a lot of different things. And, of course, not all teens are into all things when it comes to technology. So um, just keep that in mind. I'm just talking about the current trends in a broad sort of way. And I wanted to start out with good old-fashioned sitting on a couch and watching stuff. Um, this still happens, um, except nowadays it's all done through streaming. You'd be hard-pressed to find teens these days that actively watch cable television. It's kind of interesting. Some of the big streaming services out there are Disney+, Plus, Netflix, Hulu. And then for audio content, Spotify is a big one, so you can listen to podcasts and, of course, listen to all kinds of different music. Okay, so this is modern stuff, but it's as traditional as it gets because... Boy, are things not traditional when it comes to Generation Z. What I want to do is focus on two major fields, the first being gaming and the other being social media. So let's jump into gaming. There are all sorts of different devices that one can game on these days. You got, of course, your standard consoles like the current Xbox and PlayStation and Nintendo. Um, That really hasn't changed in the last 20 years. Um, But there's a lot of gaming done on smartphones as well, and of course, PC gaming. But what's new is this idea of cross-play. One person can be playing on their smartphone, uh, playing in a digital world with someone else who is on a completely different device, could be a laptop, as well as someone else who's at home on a couch playing a PlayStation, joining that world as well, okay? And that's the idea of cross-play, and it's super cool. As far as what they are playing specifically, there are so many games out there, there's just not enough time for me to go through them all, Uh, but I'll hit some of the big ones. Among Us was big a few years back, and that's basically the idea of one person is a mole, and everyone else has to try and figure out who it is and not be killed. Minecraft has been around for a while at this point, over a decade. And there's all kinds of different ways of playing Minecraft. Um, In some ways, it's more of an experience than a game. And then there's Roblox, which people think that Roblox is a game, but it's not just a game. It's a platform of games. Every single game on Roblox is a user-created game. And I can't talk about gaming and the modern teen generation without mentioning Fortnite, which is uh, essentially... A bunch of people are dropped into a world with nothing, and they have to collect resources and weapons in order to be the last person or group standing. Um, that's the essence of, of Battle Royale. And Fortnite is like the flagship Battle Royale game that's out there. It's kind of like Hunger Games, if you remember the movie. One, one thing that's cool about Fortnite is it incorporates the idea of building. So you can build defensive and sometimes offensive structures within the world and use it to your advantage. So it has that design aspect just like Minecraft does. Fortnite is also a big name in the world of esports. Esports being electronic sports. And I I think it's important for adults to understand this concept of professional gaming because a lot of times you'll see teens these days sitting in front of a computer and watching gameplay. And you might sit there and scratch your head and say, why? And they would respond, because I want to sit here and watch the person play my sport at the top of their game. And that pretty much sums up the world of gaming. Obviously, there's a lot more. Um, Let's move on to communication. Now, teens these days are not so much into phone calls and email. Of course, they know how to do both, but they have other forms of communication that, generally speaking, they would prefer, such as standard text messaging, whether it's the default app on their smartphone or a third-party app like Kick or Signal, which sometimes add a layer of anonymity, and they don't call this generation Zoomers for nothing. You have Zoom, Google Meet, Skype... What they would prefer a lot of times is something like Discord, which is an audio conferencing app where you basically have a bunch of different digital rooms that you can have audio conversations in. Talking is one thing, but 
I think that text chat is one of the most preferred forms of communication with Generation Z. I find that whether it's a social media application or some sort of game chat, that the text communication within these apps is where so much talking is happening, and it seems to work very well. It's very efficient. And I mentioned social media applications, so let's dive into the world of social media. There's so many different social media apps out there, from Instagram, where you're sharing photos and videos, to Snapchat, except those photos and videos time out. You got Twitter, where you can post status updates and see the status updates of celebrities and more. Um, this idea of having subscribers or followers is pretty much present on all of these social media services. And I did want to point out that Facebook isn't so big with Generation Z because a lot of times their parents are on that social media. Of course, you got YouTube, which is what I'm on right now. I mean, it speaks for itself. It's it's video sharing. If you're on it right now, you chances are you know what it's all about. Um, but there's other video sharing social media networks out there, TikTok being one of them. And TikTok is more about short video clips and it's really blown up in the past few years. So you might have seen on YouTube they have shorts now, which is interesting to see how they're trying to capture the same sort of style that TikTok is using. On social media, there are those who have a huge following, so much so that they can help sell a product. And this isn't just for social media. It's also in the gaming world as well. And these influencers use social media like anyone else um, but, of course, they're going to have a lot more attention uh, given to them. And sometimes they'll do live streams, which is the idea of, I mean, it's live. It's it's nothing new. Um, it's just done digitally. That's what's new. Now, all these things are good in a lot of ways. But, of course, there's a plethora of issues associated with whether it's social media or gaming. But um, let's focus on the positive. Um, there is a lot of positive out there, especially when it comes to creativity, whether it's games where you make games or apps where you learn how to code like Scratch or just generally posting on social media. Um, if you're going to post a video on TikTok or YouTube, a lot of times you're going to be editing the video, so it encourages the learning of those skills. So there's lots of creativity out there, and I am just fascinated with what the teens these days come up with, and I look forward to more. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I know I did a lot of rambling, but I think I got my point across. So I am going to go. <laughs> Have a good one.